Hello YouTube and welcome to another Windows tutorial. So in this video we will answer some questions that I get when I first posted my first video about Windows subsystem for Linux. So are you ready? Let's get started. So the first question is what are the distributions that can be actually used with WSL? So in order to get actually the distribution that you can use with the Windows subsystem for Linux, you can just type in your command actually terminal WSL minus minus list and also minus minus online. Okay. And here we go. You can see the following is a list of valid distribution that can be installed, which means these distributions are actually official distributions okay that are supported by Microsoft so you can see we can install Ubuntu of course which is the default standard for Linux distributions we have Debian we have Kali Linux we have a couple of version uh, of Ubuntu of course and also some Oracle distributions OpenSUSE which is a German distribution okay so you get a list of the official one but that doesn't mean you can install other ones but the other ones are not officially supported so if you want to get them it's simple you go to your actually windows search bar okay and you look actually for uh, the microsoft store okay so you open your microsoft store so as you can see here and you search for any distribution so for example let's search for a very famous uh, linux distribution which is the clone of red hat which is called as you can see here fedora okay so if i search for this fedora you can see that i can get it here okay so if i click on it i can actually install it using this button here get but keep in mind this is an unofficial Fedora WSL based on the root FS of Fedora Docker, which means this is not supported by Microsoft, but you can install it and uh, actually learn from it if you want. So remember, there are two kinds of distribution official one that you can get here from the command prompt, okay, and unofficial one, but that you can install directly for the Microsoft Store, okay. Second question is where is the WSL located on your computer? Okay, so here I will show you the exact location where all your actually instances of Linux are located into your Windows file system. So actually by default they are in special directory. So I will show you how. So let's open our file explorer and see where you can find them actually, okay? So this is actually, you go to your uh, uh, Windows or actually your system drive, which is C in my case here, okay? And you go to a folder called users, okay? So normally inside this folder, you will find all the sessions into your Windows machine. So me, I'm using a session called Amino, so I go into it. And here I will look for a system actually folder called up data. Okay, so I'll search for it. So this is it. It's hidden and it's a system folder. Okay. So if this folder doesn't show, you have actually to click on this uh, three dots here and go to options actually and in the view tab and here you have to actually click on this show hidden files folders and drives okay and so then you can actually get this folder here so if you go inside it you will find a batch of other folders but the one that we are looking for is called local okay then after that you go to a folder called packages so here we go this is the packages folder and inside it so for example if you want 
to look for Ubuntu, you will search for a folder called Canonical because we know that Canonical is the company that actually released Ubuntu. So let me search for this Canonical folder. So here we go, you can see here a Canonical Group Limited Ubuntu. And as a hint, you can also look for the name of your distribution. So here I have Ubuntu, so I will go inside it. And inside this folder here, there is another folder called Local State. Here we go. And finally, you will find the virtual hard disk, which is, as you can see here, named Extended 4, which is the file system for Ubuntu.vhdx. So this is the file that contains actually all the folder to your instance of Ubuntu, okay? But as you have seen on the first video, we have actually installed two instances of Linux. We installed the Debian and Ubuntu. So let's verify that with the command WSL list and I will also or just list. So you can see here we have two distributions that we have installed Ubuntu and Debian. So this is the location for the Ubuntu, but where is the distribution for actually Debian? So as I told you, you go some folders up into the packages and you just search for any folder that contains the keyword Debian, okay? And here we go, you get this folder here, the Debian project, Debian GNU Linux. You go inside it, and same as for the Ubuntu, you look for the local state folder. And here we go, you will find the virtual hard disk actually for the distribution that you have installed. So as a hint, always go to this packages folder and look actually for the distribution name as search criteria in order to find the virtual hard disk for your distribution. Okay, so let's move on for another question. So the other question that I wanted to answer actually is how to access files from your Windows. Okay, so here let's do something very interesting. Let's go inside this Ubuntu distribution that we have installed. So the command is WSL minus D and the distribution name which is in my case Ubuntu okay Ubuntu here we go I am inside now actually the distribution Ubuntu okay here we go so if I go for example to my home directory which is slash home let me just write it slash home slash amine. Here we go. So this is the home directory. We can verify that using the command print working directory or actually print working directory. Yes, I am in home amine. So let's create, for example, here a folder. So I will use the command the Linux command touch in order to create an empty file so I will just name it for example readme readme okay so this is the file that I have created readme so let's uh, for example uh, add line inside it so I can use for example nano as an editor here we go this is just for testing Okay, so I will save that, Control X, then I will confirm, hitting Y, then enter. Okay, so let's verify the content using the cat command. So cat readme, here we go. It contains only one line, which is, this is just for testing, okay? So how can you actually access this file from your Windows, okay? So here, let me exit the instance. So I will use the exit command, okay? So let's verify actually that uh, our Linux is running using the list and the verbose commands 
variables. Yes, so as you can see, Ubuntu is running state and Debian is stopped. So we know that the instance of Ubuntu is running. So how can I access actually the file that I have just created? So it's pretty easy actually. So all you have to do is to click the Windows key and the R command in your keyboard. So you will get actually this run window and you can just type WSL dollar sign which means that you can actually access a share, a hidden share, okay? So if I do an OK, you can see now that I get folder for the distribution that I have, okay? So we know that only Ubuntu is running, so let's go inside it and verify actually the file that we have created. So remember it was created in slash home slash amino and here we go this is our file readme as you can see here okay and of course you can open it just using any text editor for windows so by default we will open it using notepad here we go and this is it as you can see this is just for testing so we have accessed this file which is in the linux instance from our actually WSL dollar sign from a more run window okay so this is a trick that you can use in order to access the file that are located in your Linux distributions okay but now how, how can we do the inverse thing which means how can we access this time Windows files from WSL so it's pretty easy so let's go to the ubuntu instance that is running okay so simply in order to access for example the c drive it's pretty easy you have to actually go to the mount folder and inside it you'll find your c drive so this is the command so if i list for example all the content of the c drive I will get actually all the files that you can see here okay so here we have access denied because actually this file is not accessible from the WSL but you can see here we have all the Windows folder okay so you can access actually any any file in your Windows uh, file system from the WSL so remember always go to the directory mount which is mnt and you'll find all your actually folders for windows okay so let me exit that so the final question actually is how to do an offline install of any distribution okay so let's say that uh, you want to install the wsl actually distribution for example Oracle or Linux or Fedora or something like that in a computer but that computer doesn't have actually internet so you cannot install it from the command line using the internet or actually using also the Microsoft Store so how can you actually install it offline so you have to go to a Microsoft web page so I will show you of course you will find it in the description so this is actually the are here displaying all the steps that you can use in order to do a manual install for WSL. And if you go to the bottom actually, you will find links for the different distributions that you can install offline, okay? So actually what you get here is the package bundle this package bundle has an extension up x actually okay so as you can see here if the microsoft store app is not available you can download and manually install linux distribution using this link so here you'll find the link in order to download what we call an up x bundle okay so let's do that and see how we can install it offline 
So for example, I will choose to download this Oracle Linux 8.5. So I will just click the link. And here, as you can see, it's downloaded to my download folder. Okay, so me, I will download it to my actually desktop. Okay, and after that, we can simply install it using this command here, add apx package. Okay, and of course, the package name, which is in my case, Oracle Linux. Okay, so the download is almost complete. Let's go now. Normally, you will execute this command using PowerShell. So let's do that. Okay, so let's search for PowerShell here. Here we go. I will go to PowerShell and I will run it as an administrator in order to avoid any errors. Okay, so this is my PowerShell window. Okay, so let's go actually to the desktop which is which actually located the file that we have installed so let's list content with the dark mat so here we go you can see that we have the oracle package or bundle and now let's execute it using the command that we have just stated so let me clear screen so it's called add up x package and of course here i have to provide the full name of the package which is oracle linux 8.5 and let's execute this command and see what we get so you can see here the deployment process or operation progress actually so hopefully now we have actually installed the Oracle Linux, okay? So after the deployment has finished, if you now click on your start menu here, you can see that Oracle Linux has been recently added. So if I click on it, so if you click on this link, you will get this window here installing. This may take a few minutes and here we go. You have to enter actually your username and password as we have done for uh, actually open to distribution okay so the installation is successful so now we are actually inside oracle linux okay so as you can see the installation is pretty pretty simple to do offline okay we can of course check the version here using this command here cut slash etc slash oracle release and you can see we are running oracle linux server release 8.5 okay and that what we have actually downloaded okay so that was just a few answers to some questions that i got recently so as always i hope it has been informative for you and i want to thank you for viewing and please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and follow actually the my youtube videos otherwise i hope it has been informative for you and i want to thank you for viewing